our unscripted and unplugged get together with friends. We are here today in Everett, Massachusetts. No, no? actually, it's Malden, Massachusetts. Malden, Massachusetts. I stand corrected. Thank you. And we have the distinct pleasure of having our distinct pleasure. You sure? Yeah, I'm thinking about it. Okay. Just uh, I'll give some time to. Uh, I'm trying to figure out things. How should I introduce some time. Flavio? <laughs> <laughs> but we're very happy to have our co-host Flavio Zanetti here with us. Um, I'm Dan CC, and and Flavio. We also have two of our favorite friends out here. Very esteemed friends that are local to Massachusetts. We are esteemed friends. Like we have a pot. What what's uh, like a pot on the stove? No, esteemed. Steamed. Very yeah. high oh, okay. esteemed. Esteemed. Okay. Yeah. Esteemed. I thought it was like, what I need. Like, let's not <laughs> no, steam. Not it. steamed. Yeah. Like steamed. Yeah. We can no, call you no, Mr. No, no. Broccoli. If <laughs> you want to. No, no, Mr. We no. really have Mackenzie Mello here with her. With, with us, and along with Nahur Ponseca. Yes, Nahur. welcome. Thank you very much for having me. And right. we are thrilled to be here. And as you guys know, our um, agenda is a simple one. We talk about things off the cuff. We just decide to get together and share a little bit of the joy that it is to talk about topics from a spiritist perspective. And we do have quite a little bit of fun as we go. So I should warn you, that if you're looking for a formal presentation, this is not the place for you. You won't, find it, you won't find it here. You won't yeah. find it here, right? Um, but so, what's our topic today, Flavio? The transformative power of spiritism. How about that? The transformative power of spiritism. That's a great topic. And uh, we should also set the context and tell people that we are here at the Alain Kardec Spirit Society of Massachusetts in their brand new location that they opened this year. Is that right? Yep, January this year. And it's a uh, beautiful place. Do you want to tell us a little bit more about Sure. It? This is a... Uh, the building is of a Unitarian church that was founded in 1890. So it's over a 100-year-old building, all stoned, Gothic architecture on the outside. And the Ellen Kardec Spirit Society of Massachusetts rents the basement of, the, uh, of this building. It's a pretty large uh, building over 10,000 square feet, and we rent about 4,000 or so square feet of the basement. So it's a, it's a great uh, co-location with our, our friends from the Unitarian Church that are upstairs. It's a great, uh, great partnership that we found here. And we're thrilled to have here, because to be here, because we think that's basically the core of what we talked about, coming together. Yep, coming together. Regardless of labels. Exactly. To make sense of the world. Yep. We're even talking to them about uh, a, a uh, co shared sermon, so to speak. Maybe eventually we'll do that as, uh, as time progresses. We're looking to do some uh, interfaith you know, uh, uh, activities, so stay tuned. Of course, whenever that happens, we'll get back to you guys with some more information on it. That's great. And our friend Neher, um, also a part of the group, right, Neher? Yes. I uh, work with the teenagers in the you know, class of teachers for the young people and teenagers. Well, I'm also young, man. Come on, can we be there? Uh, I'm no. also young. And <laughs> hard, at least. Physically, not mentally. Physically, sir. I'm sorry. Open that. Yeah. And I should stop and also um, say that, uh, um, ask, ask Neher, because I call him Neher. Yeah. <laughs> But how do you call yourself, Neher? Well, my name is Naur, and usually when people ask what my name is, I say, you just drop the H. So think about now or never. So you stop at the now or that's not Naur. No, so it's really an hour, <laughs> and I should apologize to our listeners because I take quite a bit of liberties with my friend <laughs> an hour um, and everybody over here. But I wanted to make sure that we fix that, yeah, so yeah. that he's called by the name that you know he would like to be called okay. by. Okay. Well, I, when I lived in Brazil, it was a hard name even for Brazilians. So this is a in Portuguese. Uh, it's a little easier to pronounce it. But uh, anything that ended with your, the people would call me. Benny Hur, uh, Itaú, even. It's not, it's a, they would call me names that end with U, and I just got to recognize that that's me. <laughs> that's me. And Flavio, if Flavio called him by a different name this morning. Charles. Charles. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole new story. Man. That's a whole new episode. I don't really think we should get into that. Okay. So I actually had the, the okay. pleasure to live with Nahur. We shared a house about 14 years ago, maybe 15 years ago. Something along the yeah, we're getting old. Yeah. So actually, we were roommates back let's, in the let's not, let's not name the number of <laughs> yeah, years. Yeah, just years are irrelevant right now. Yeah. So we, uh, the three of us, so we called each other the same name, which was Chahu, <laughs> which was a combination of something else, which I don't even remember well, where it came from. It from a Portuguese word. It doesn't mean anything in English, yeah. <laughs> so I have no idea. Great. And 
Um, other than that word, we also have a good friend, Mackenzie Mello here. Now, Mackenzie is not technically part of uh, Lenkard Spiritual Society of Massachusetts. Tell us, Mackenzie, where do you come from and how did you find yourself here? <laughs> That's fun. Uh, last year, we had uh, this first, uh, I had my first participation on the conversations with you and Flavio, and it was around this time of the year, which was during the event that we make uh, in our spirit center in Peabody, or as some people prefer to call Peabody, uh, our Jorespi that Daniel last year said it should not be called um, eighth Jorespi but Jorespi eight and this year we're we're having Jorespi nine and uh, so we invited him back to give us another talk and um, that's why I'm here at uh, AKSSMA to see the lecture that he gave to us this morning and uh, to pick him up and go to Peabody so that he can be with us this uh, tonight, so I'm thrilled to 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 do that, and thanks for welcoming here me here as well, guys. It's just great to be here. Yep. Um, Thank you for coming. You're always welcome here, Danny. Yeah. I appreciate it. And same and same goes to you. Come visit. Come visit us on the other side of the of the country. San Diego, where the the sun is up. Yes, all year and, and round. as I like to call it, Dan Diego. Dandy. You can just call it, come to Dan Diego. <laughs> and uh, the way I sell San Diego to my friends is. It's the city in the United States with the smallest um, temperature variation throughout the year. So you almost always, degrees, always get the same thing all the time. So if you're looking for a place to run away from the heat or from the cold, San Diego is probably your place. Mm. And I think the city of San Diego probably should pay me to say that. But um, <laughs> payments allowed. You know, payments allowed because, you know, as you can tell, nobody's paid. All of our, and all our activities are volunteered. So Just like any other spiritist effort, right? Yeah, exactly. So today we were talking about the transform transformative power. Transformative power of spiritism. What is that? What is that, Flavio? What is that? So um, for all of us, I should say, right, spiritists, it doesn't really matter if you just got to learn, know spiritism a week ago, a month ago, or a life, you know, a physical life ago. But uh, spiritism has a power in it itself to really transform people. That's what we've, uh, we've seen, right? And we had the, uh, the pleasure to hear Danny speaking to us this morning around that. But uh, the one thing that I'll say that really sparkled me uh, from that 45 minutes that you spoke was that a lot of people don't stop to pay attention what's happening to their lives thanks to spiritism. Mm -hmm. right? How much you know, more patient you are, how much more charitable you are, how many activities you're doing now uh, based on what you're learning through spiritism, that maybe if you weren't here, you wouldn't be doing those things. So that to me was an interesting call to action, to really stop and make me think about that, which really brings us all back to our own reality, which is this spiritual reality we all have, right? Did you have, that's, that's a good point, Flavio, because I often ask myself the question, right? Um, did you have any um, insights or ideas as to yourself, like how, how, your life has changed because of spiritism? I think there, there's, to me at least, well, I was born into spiritism, so I didn't really become a spiritist. But there's, there's that point in time that's there, you know, uh, um, uh, tipping point, as I like to call, you know, quoting uh, Malcolm Gl uh, Gladwell here. Um, the tipping point is you get to learn spiritism, but then at one point, spiritism really enters you. Mm -hmm. And whenever that happens, right? Uh, most things that you do, most things that you're thinking about doing, right? Your, your behaviors, your attitude, are shaped from what you learn in spiritism, which is to always be charitable towards others, right? To do really treat others as, you know, your, your neighbors, your next ones, your, your siblings. And I was, while I was doing the translation to, from Portuguese to English, I mean, it really daunted to me that a lot of things that we do that we don't usually stop to pay attention for, from our spiritual reality, I was thinking about this uh, every, almost every leader nowadays, right, at work in, in corporate America, thinks about servant leadership. What is that? What is that in reality? It's really treating others the way you want to be treated, right? It's helping others, it's serving others, those that report to you, those that work for you. And I was thinking about that. This is what we learned from Spiritism 150 years ago. And now it's this, oh, it's a great jargon in, in business America that, oh, you got to serve your employees. And guess what? Jesus taught us. 2,000 years ago, right? Like, we don't stop to pay attention. In the past, and I include myself too, in the past, 
we thought, okay, let me go to the church, let me go to the temple, let me go to the Spiritist Center, and I'm religious, I'm, you know, this and that, at that particular time. But guess what? We live 24 hours a day. So how much, how many of our behaviors are shaped by what we learn in Spiritism? And to me, it's, it was just, oh. Yeah, when Daniel was, was speaking, I was remembering when I was very young. Yesterday. <laughs> Crickets, that's where the crickets are in the background. How long ago was that, right? And uh, I was I was in the uh, the, the youth group, as now we're called, um, with a lot of friends. And the person that was with us teaching and uh, having this conversation, she asked everybody. She asked, what would you be doing? What would you be if you were not the spiritist? What you'd be doing if you were not here this afternoon learning what you're learning? And what will you do from now on? And this really stuck in my mind. And uh, that was a, a, a question that apparently is a very simple question. And the question is simple, but the, well, the meanders that the question goes to in your mind when you really try to answer that question, that's what Spiritism makes us do. It's not that, give, it doesn't give us answers only. It gives us questions. It gives us the power to think about what we are living and what we are doing with our lives. And uh, uh, one thing uh, to go back to what uh, Flavio was saying and what we heard in your uh, wonderful talk this morning, Daniel, was um, that, that slide where you showed facts, ideas, and then philosophy. And when we see exactly what Flavio was talking about, corporate America, looking at the facts of life, looking at what nature does. Nature saves everybody. It doesn't mean, it doesn't uh, choose who to serve. It doesn't choose what uh, this apple will be for you, for me, for a person that is in jail, for a person that killed someone. It doesn't choose. And that's a fact of nature. That's a fact of life. And that's what spiritism does to us. It asks us to look to life and, and understand what that teaching is, what that fact is, and make us really, what am I going to do with this? What is this idea and what philosophy of life should I uh, use in my life, should I have for my life? So those things and merging with what Flavio was talking about just made so much yeah. sense now. And I love these moments because they, they are very reflexive moment, reflective moments, right? Like there's a metacognition going on when we are actually thinking or questioning ourselves about what is it that we're learning. Because most of the time, we just learn, right? We go somewhere, we pick something up, and we just kind of take the content in. But um, it's good for us to, every so often, to stop and analyze our learning and say, hey, am I learning? What am I learning? So you kind of take a step back and reflect, which I feel ultimately is the quest of spiritism, but any other thing out there, right, is you want to develop that critical sense. You want to be able to grow in understanding of things. And to do that, you have to ask yourself these questions, which is not easy, right? No, it's not easy. It's not an easy process at all. But I love what Flavio said in a connection you made to business in general, because I've always looked at these whole, like, whether they are fads or not, like it's, right, like there's always a management tip out there or something with pressing of ears. But I've always thought about it as, you know, at the end of the day, we're people, whether we are people dealing in spirituality or in business. Ultimately, it's people. And people are always trying to make sense of things. So I totally agree with you how interesting it is that we can even take these ethical concepts that we learn in spiritism and apply in a very managerial or business-like setting, right? So I love these crossover moments when we see things. I mean, and, and uh, studies show that uh, leaders or managers that are you know, really serving their employees are more effective, they're more resourceful, they're getting way, they're more productive, they're more efficient. There are a lot of benefits from really driving servant leadership, right? And uh, there's, a, there's a huge buzz in corporate America right now to really become servant leaders. And this is exactly what we've learned from Jesus. We really learned from spiritism, right? They're going to treat others with the same way as we treat, you know, we treat the general the same way as you, the CEO, the company, and all that. And what, it's just basic years, human goodness. Yeah, basic right? human, you know, one-on-one -on -one relationship, right? right? yeah. But along the way, along the years, we lost that because of, you know, society, you know, callings or because we just lost it. Right? I think well, now uh, we're, we're, we're bringing, brought back to the basics, I should say, 
of treating others with respect, right? Independently of their, you know, social, political condition, right? Uh, and if you connect the dots between what we learned in Spiritism, monastical moral component, with what we're seeing, results are telling us that if you really want to become an effective leader, you've got to be a servant leader. You've got to be a servant leader. I mean, that's like, dude, seriously, this is like one-on-one. <laughs> it's really yeah. making sense yeah. of what we learned so, from Spiritism. I think uh, when you say the transformative power of Spiritism, what I, what I hear, or one of the aspects that I want to bring is you know, spiritism is, you know, a doctrine of the spirits. It's the spirits book. It's named uh, the book of the spirits. And the reason is because Alain Kardec just asks questions and the spirits will answer uh, through mediums like young girls that are 13, 14 years old that had, they had no uh, ability to give such profound philosophical answers. And so, spiritism is not the only vessel through which the spirits can work. And the transformative Absolutely. power of uh, spiritism is not only found in spiritual centers, right? So, that the way the spirits work is, we can even imagine, right? If, if we think the most organized institution on earth is, I don't know, what you, what you, you should think organization, what you think, maybe, I don't know. Spirits are much more organized, right? And there is a, uh, uh, a select uh, group of pure spirits upon which hands uh, rests the destiny and the uh, events of this planet. And Jesus is one of those spirits. He's the governor of our planet. And he, imagine how many departments, how many task forces, how many uh, projects, uh, to bring and elevate the earth to, to the next level, right? So, of course, you know, there will be managerial or management ideas, new management ideas. Of course, there will be new trends or new ideas in Catholicism or uh, Episcopalian religions or even other philosophies that are not related to religions at all. Because that's the truth, that's the way the spirits live and what is true will show up. Yeah, I would actually argue that all change is individual in nature, right? These are places like a spiritual center, a church, a temple, are places in which perhaps part of the change is catalyzed and takes place. But ultimately the goal is individual change regardless of label, right? So it would only make sense, and I'll hop on the bandwagon there, now we're, which is... It only makes sense that it has to happen everywhere. In fact, that we want it to happen yeah. everywhere. We want it to happen at your house, at your work, with your friends, at the bar, at the concert, at the temple, at the church, anywhere where behavior and choices change and are made. Right? Let's, let's talk about that. Let, let's double click on house behavior. Right? So if you, you know, rewind our, our... You know we're in the radio, right? We're not on a computer. We don't need to double click on anything. Well, I'm sorry. That's my I just computer. want to make sure you know. Okay. Yeah, I, know you know, I know you're virtually connected, Mr. Know, yeah. Technology Man. If we delve down on the house aspect of this comment, <laughs> I would say that uh, 50 years ago, there were very solid lines between what the husband and the wife were responsible for, right? The husband was responsible well, some, for... Well, some would claim that to this day we have not had oh, equity yeah. yet. It's right? true. I mean, and the, the feminist movement is out there trying to make a change, right, for um, women's rights and all that. You know, same sex, uh, same, I argue the same thing. What I'm trying to say is, um, if you learn through spiritism, then guess what, right? If you're in that home, there's a reason for that. That person that you have a relationship with, right? You have a, a certain level of affinity with that person. There's a, there's a you know an opportunity for you, the two of you, right? And of course, if you have kids or not, to really keep developing, keep you know building something, and then you don't treat that person as inferior to you or superior to you, right? As 50, 50 60 years ago used to be the case, right? I like to call that. Uh, I don't help my wife at home. We share tasks because if I were to help her, that would ma mean that she actually owned all the activities and she doesn't, right? It's a partnership. Yeah. It's just, a combined effort yeah. to really move together. Just like fathers don't babysit. 
right? <laughs> like you don't babysit your kids. No, you parent right? your kids. You parent your kids. Yeah, it's yeah. your responsibility to be there. So like this, oh yeah, tonight I'm gonna babysit my kid. No, you're not gonna babysit your kids. That's your job. Yeah, exactly. it's, it's you're your a father, job. right? Yeah, but we learned that from spiritism in 1857 that yes. there's no difference between sexes, right? Because guess what? We are in this male body this this time, in this incarnation, and that's when I could come back as a female and so forth, right? So by learning, by having really a brought me or you know brought me on a horizon like that it becomes very difficult for us to be prejudiced people. and that is i think one That's of the amazing. powerful things about spiritism right when when we because obviously uh, spiritism does not have the monopoly on reincarnation right but it does um, explain it in a quite a logical and rational way i feel like and once we latch on to the idea of reincarnation it's quite the great equalizer as i like to say mm -hmm. it right because if you truly bring reincarnation to your heart and you come to terms with the idea of what you just said, right, Flavia, which is today you're in this physical body and you might be male and you might be white. Tomorrow you might be in another physical body and that might be a female body and you might be black, right? And tomorrow you might be in another body who maybe doesn't um, identify with a specific gender and you might be Asian, right? We just don't know. And that does not matter. What matters is the core of who you are. Are you a good person, are you making strides toward becoming a better person? So all those external markers, labels, labels should 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 vanish from Through us. Through all time, well, at least for us right now, that we're studying as people and we try to really study spiritism, they should not be part of our dictionaries. And that's what, I mean, eventually they will still be there, you know, but they should not be part of our dictionaries for our future because they don't, there's no more space for these behaviors or these thoughts if you truly, seriously study spiritism. Yeah, and uh, you, were, you were talking about parenting your kids, right? And right before we started the conversation here, we were outside there, you know, having something to eat, and we were talking about education of kids at home, and are they coming to the Spiritist Center or not coming to the Spiritist Center? Of course, that when they are young, we need to guide them, and that's our job, as Daniel was saying, you know, we are their parents, and we, we want them to be a good person, and that's what Spiritism should really strive for for everybody to be a good person if the person will be at the end uh, a unitarian like in this church that we are here if they're going to be a, a spiritist if they're going to be whatever they want to choose but if they behave as a, a good man a good person as Kardec says in the gospel according to spiritism with all those characteristics of not only thinking about myself not only doing things for myself not only uh, uh, acting on the world for me to gain, for me to have, for me to, for me, for me. No, it's the other way around. It's for us to grow. It's for us to be a better community. You know, we see people that don't ever talk, never talk about uh, any kind of religion. They don't go to churches. They don't go anywhere. They never talk about Jesus, never talk about anything. And then you see their lives uh, on the weekend, they are uh, organizing stuff to collect trash from their streets, to organize their city, to make the city a better place to live, you know, to uh, gather people. Let's have this community sale. So let's gather a lot of people from this community and then put trash out and then they will all go together. And they are not doing this in the name of any religion. They are being and doing what Spiritism has been trying to teach us or, you know, has been teaching us. The thing is, are we learning? That's what. Wait, 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 wait. I got to do a plug here. Oh, yeah, true. Because you're talking about community service. <laughs> and so I have a pet project, and now I'm going to shamelessly plug in here. <laughs> I want to invite everybody to go to www.spiritistdayofservice.org. And the idea is simple. It's exactly what Mackenzie just described. Break down walls and labels, whether you're spiritist or not, it does not matter. But let's go out there and let's volunteer in our community. One day a year, we're asking folks, especially in the spiritist community, to come together and just volunteer in the same weekend, December 2nd and 3rd of this year. Do whatever it is that you want to do. You decide what you want to do, and you might even find people near you doing it. But just pledge to volunteer and volunteer. Let us know that you've done it, and let's see how many people can do this. Let's make a movement out of this. Let's help. Let's what's, be known what's by the helping. website again? Oh, thank you for asking, Mackenzie. <laughs> www.spiritistdayofservice.org. The oh, idea is that's an awesome idea. 
so please let's talk about afterwards see if we can get our communities to get involved as well uh, but thanks for the for the opportunity that I had to I had to slide that in and sorry uh, Mr. Flav no problem no problem so what are you going to say I was going to say I actually lost no. what I was going to say yeah <laughs> I, I just after asked that question like, he's not going to remember because I just cut him off how kids going to remember it's all right so um, let me see if I you get back to me you get back to me don't we have to make a break or something the commercial. Oh, perfect timing. We should take a break. Mackenzie, do you want to lead us into our commercials? <laughs> yeah, so now you're here from our sponsors. Who are they? <laughs> still looking for something. I don't think we ever had one, but still looking for something. we paused for it anyways. All right, we'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. My name is Rosando Kleinger and I listen to Spiritist Conversations. My name is Daniela Sakuyoshi, I am from Atlanta, Georgia, and I listen to Spiritist Conversations. Hi, my name is Teresa from Miami, Florida, and I listen to Spiritist Conversation. Hi, my name is Claudio from San Jose, California, and I listen to Spiritist Conversation. I'm Marcia from Atlanta, Georgia, and I listen to Spiritist Conversations. And how about you? Do you listen to Spiritist Conversations too? Or did you just happen to stumble upon a program today? Either way, drop us a note. We would love to hear from you. After all, it takes many voices for a great conversation. Reach out to us on Facebook and give us your opinion on our podcast. Tell us what you think we should talk about or just chime in to say that you're listening. Who knows? We might just ask you to come on the air with us if you're willing. But regardless, thank you for listening. And now, back to a program. And we're back. <laughs> we're back from our break. I hope you um, heard from our wonderful sponsors, um, which we have to probably Still make up. Still looking for some. Yeah. And by the way, if you're listening to this um, and you feel like there is an announcement that you want to get out, um, write to us. Connect with us on Facebook, on Twitter. Um, let us know, and we'll be glad to to share here on on, um, on Spiritus Conversations. And we were talking about uh, the transformative power of Spiritism, and Mackenzie um, touched on a very important point, which was it the goal of Spiritism is to help make great human beings or better human beings. It's not about making great spiritists. Yeah, that's right? correct. And that's what we were talking about, about our kids. Because, you know, sometimes we as parents expect that our kids will go to the spiritist center, will open up another spiritist center, and maybe that's not their calling. Maybe their calling is to be a great social worker, for example, and work with kids outside. But they will have, if we really... Uh, were able to teach them and to show them what's this transformative power of spiritism, they will put that into practice in their work outside. Mm -hmm. And maybe they will do, and they will do even better than uh, if we, some, some of us that are inside the Spiritist Center all the time, and then when we go out, we never practice what we are preaching, right? So I have a question for you, Mackenzie, then. So is it possible to, as you mentioned, right? Uh, let me context, contextualize first. So you said that, double click on that. Double click on that. Yeah, yeah. I like that. You're gonna <laughs> I, I'm, gonna use, I'm totally going to use that. So, <laughs> so imagine if you were like a good human being, the person you mentioned that was doing a lot of community service, bringing back to the community and all that, without any label whatsoever. So here's me thinking, is it possible to be a spiritist without even reading or even going to spiritist? Oh, yeah. I, I, I can think of Jesus being a spiritist. Totally. Because that's what he was doing all the time. He was questioning, he was teaching, he was practicing, and he never heard the word before. <laughs> right? it, the opposite is also true, though. It is possible for you to call yourself a spiritist and do none of these things. <laughs> none right? of these whatsoever. Because that, identity is a self-defined thing. Like yeah. You can say whatever the heck you, you want about who you are, and I mean, that's what you want to say. So... It's important, I think this, the important message here is for us not to attain ourselves a lot to the labels, but try to look for the actions and the behaviors and the conduct. To and see that's what actions. Naur was, was talking about before. He was saying, right, this, it's a, the book of spirits. It's not uh, like a formal religion. It's, you know, the spirits are everywhere. Right? It's not no. called the book of spiritists. It's not called, right? Yeah. It's called the book of spiritists, you know... Uh, guide or yeah, and the spirits asked 
the author to change its name to further make a point that it was not his. Right? So the, the name Alain Kardec yeah. is the name that uh, Professor Rivelle, who was well known in the time in France for educational work and actually had a grammar book that was used throughout the country, so he was easily recognizable for that, for that perspective. They asked him to use a name from a previous incarnation to make the point that this was not his book. This was the book from the spirits with their teachings. And he honors that by keeping the questions and answers format, right? Saying, here's what they said uh, with very little of his own interpretation. His great value add was organizing in a way that, in the order in which it makes sense for us as an educator, but it was their work. So I think that's just a lesson, a lesson there for us. So, Daniel, help, you, help us understand you. Since you're an educator yourself, or you work in education, right? Uh, pretty much your entire career, right? Uh, Help us understand from uh, Ellen Kardec's point of view. Do you think that we spiritists, or those who, those of us who go to the spiritist centers, who you know lead activities, who study, right, or avid study, students of spiritism, do you think we give we give enough credit or enough value to Kardec's work still today? Not by a long shot. Not by a long shot. I think that um, we are so. Um, still in that journey of self-discovery, that we're still paying attention to the content and we're trying to master the great content that comes from spiritism and from spirit communication in general, that we haven't yet put a lot of time in the process that he used to organize that content for us. Because when we start looking at that, the way he organized the books and the way the content makes its way in, we see a great mind of work and his ability to summarize things and to bring these different and dis disparate parts of knowledge together is quite genius, I, I personally feel. Um, but he doesn't talk a lot about that, right? He, he wants you to kind of get there on your own. So I think that the, there's a lot for us to talk about. Maybe this is a topic for another conversation, is to talk about the structure of the codification of the Spirit's book and how the structure of the Spirit's book is actually mirrored in the books that come afterwards and how the learning process, the pedagogical process, was set up in such a way as it goes from the simple and to what is known to what is unknown, which in a way precedes a lot of educational theory that comes after him. Mm -hmm. um, so it's really, really great um, and really insightful uh, thing, but I don't think we get it, right? And it's okay for us not to get it as long as we, um, we continue to, to improve. And As you heard, this is where we put the brakes in the conversation. That's because from here on, we started to talk about a wonderful event called the Spiritist Family Retreat that takes place every year. To make sure this program didn't run too long though, we decided to skip that part for now and make a separate program about the Spiritist Family Retreat in the future. This way we keep the programs smaller, as some of you have suggested, and stay within the original topic. But don't worry, we'll pick it up again in a future episode. So let's go back to the topic and start the conversation back up again. Yeah. And these are powerful things, right? Because I think it goes back to the idea of uh, the transformative power of spiritism of folks taking the time out of their days, of course, no one gets paid a dime for this stuff, to then they come together to create this opportunity for folks to talk about uplifting topics and very um, contemporary and important topics as in like helping others and getting out of yourself and, and kind of passing that knowledge on to, to, to quote, quote, the kids, right? Mm -hmm. Which continue to grow and take the responsibility on. These are kind of things that happen when our soul starts to, to, um, to blossom, uh, starts to open up into the spiritual reality and for us to understand that there's more than to what meets the eyes, right? So these are one of the few things that, I mean, clearly we could say there would be no family spiritist retreat if you weren't for spiritism, yeah. right? There would be Absolutely. none of these things. And so ultimately we start to think about, um, you know, this kind of things. And so if we want to close up now, because we are running against our time, um, what would you say are things that, um, are really transformative within spiritism, either in your life or in general, that has really made a difference in the world or for you? Well, for me, I think the shift, my road to Damascus, 
happened in those retreats in Brazil as I was learning to play the guitar, to be with kids. I had to cross town to be with them. That's how much I liked my friends and spiritism and the dedication was and the commitment was, was built at that time. Yeah, I second, I second that. To now we're, that was the time when I really felt that spiritism had this power to change me. And it, it happened exactly the same way. I mean, it was not in my town. It's not that far away, but we had to drive to meet these people. There were people that would come from either farther away than I was, and we would meet there. We would share, like uh, Daniel was saying, uh, activities together that were programmed, but there were times when we had free time to play, to you know, uh, play soccer, to play basketball together, to have you know, to walk towards this lake that we have there, and then there would be people playing the guitar, like Lau was saying that he he learned. I didn't learn that part, but and that thing when it caught me, and I was able to see that. I had some friends from there that were leading a good life and they were having kids and then they were having a family and uh, they were uh, not only giving their time there, but they were happy doing that. It's not just about being there, but it's, it's actively being there, being present, being present, being the person there. And then when we would meet outside there, I would see the same flare in their eyes. You know, the same joy of life for doing whatever they were doing. And that really uh, sparked in me that power. And that's why we are here together. At least that's why I am here. <laughs> Interesting. Um, I, I also participated in some of these events. They're, they're great. Uh, but I'm not going to use that, that example. I would say that um, if, I, if I'm able to connect the dots here, I mean, I come from a very modest upbringing, right? but we were never really super poor. I mean, we were modest and simple, but not like, you know, without a, a plate of food in our day-to-day, you, know, day -day, you know, house, right? But once I started to really go more often to the Spirit Center, I started to really volunteer. There are a lot of kids that were coming to the Spirit Center from the slums, from like more, way more dire conditions than our own conditions. And I really started to why is it that you know I'm here and mm -hmm. they're there, and I can tell you without any any fear of being uh, 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 wrong here that if I were not a spiritist, I'll probably be an atheist today, because the world would not make sense without what, from what I learned from spiritism, at least to me. Right? Mm -hmm. God, in my opinion, would not be just and fair without knowing that we know through thanks to spiritism, reincarnation, you know, the, the power of you know. The ability that we have now to think that we may come back in a different setting, the different you know, condition overall, to me that made a huge difference. And that really uh, started to really open my mind when I was like a 16, 17 year old teenager, helping volunteer, you, you, helping with the uh, youth group. I started to really asking these questions. And one question in particular, um, we were eating after the, uh, the event, we had, used to go to the spirit center in the morning. After the event, we go for you know snacks in Brazil, pastel. If you're familiar yeah. with the culture, right? and they're eating you know that, and all of a sudden, I see this you know very expensive car coming in, and the guy b buying you know pastel at the uh, local you know uh, farmers market. Farmers market, and all of a sudden, like a poor child goes and asks for some food, and the guy clearly had a lot of money, and he said no to that child, and um, one of the kids, one of my my colleagues, to the joint structure. Oh, poor kid, right? I mean, he doesn't have any, you know, any food. And said, oh, poor guy, so-and-so, because he had the opportunity to help a kid, and he didn't. That kid is, you know, really reaping the uh, wrongdoings of the past, but the other guy is creating more, you know, difficult, you know, things for him in the future. So when you put that into perspective, you really change how you think about life. It really transforms your, your status quo. And to me, that's the... Uh, that's the most uh, important message that I, you know, keep on to these days. What about you, Dan? What, what? So hard. So many different things, right? When we stop to think about it, because um, sometimes I stop to think about it. I said, eh, I don't know if it has really changed me. You know, there's moments you have when you question mm -hmm. things. I do that mm -hmm. every once in a while. And, and, then, and then I realize, no, it actually has. I mean, besides making me a more tolerant person, which is, I know, hard to imagine for you guys. <laughs> um, but I think it has really transformed the way I look at things. Um, as I'm able to look more with spiritual eyes, I feel more settled in the world. 
I feel more hopeful and less shaken up by all the things that sometimes I look out there and I get really worried. I get worried about um, where our country is going, where our world is going. I get worried about a bunch of things on a day to day. But knowing that there is a God and that things are under control um, and that it's up to us to make a difference because we don't want to just kind of shove it over to God and say, you figure it out, right? That's the reason why we're here. He helps me calm down a little bit and be more tolerant of myself and of others. Um, and I've started to, little by little, look at people as spiritual beings and less as people as we are used to, so to say, right? And so that means that they too are trying to get it right, that they too have a history, that they too, um, just like me, right, are well-intentioned. We might just disagree on the means, but I think we are all looking to be happy. So when I think about that, it has made it easier for me to to uh, to deal with difficult situations and sometimes difficult people, um, and it has really made a difference in my in my life. And it has made me. I know it sounds sounds like silly, but it has made me fundamentally happier. I am able to see the good in things more often than not. I'm able to be in a situation where it's not as pleasing and say, "Well, there's a lesson here for me to learn, and I'm going to be okay." At the end of the day. I use that a lot. Like I've also learned uh, a lot about first world problems, right? <laughs> I, and I joke around with my friends, first world problems, people, right? Like if this project's not going to get done, if this is not going to happen the way we want to, first world problems, right? We're going to live, right? There's no if third world war, yeah. Right, right. If your yeah, iPhone's exactly. out of batteries, like it's not the end of the world, right? There's well, people there's no who, Wi-Fi. Yeah, well, Wi-Fi is <laughs> different, but um, <laughs> can't double click that. Um, <laughs> but if, if you're, you know, phone, your phone's dying, it's not the end of the world. There's people who don't have drinking water. Let's do something about that, right? So, um, so it has made me put things in perspective, and that has really helped. And I look forward to what it will bring me in the future. And I think that... That's one of the like bases of spiritism where you continue to, 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 to go forward, to strive for better. Um, and so I really look forward to what the next um, X number of years in this incarnation are going to bring me and how I'm going to grow in, in tolerance and patience and understanding. Um, I, think I, I, am a, I think I am a better person now than I would otherwise be. I think I would be a little bit more lost in the world. If you weren't for spiritism, I think I would have... I oh, I would have been um, sidetracked a little bit more on appearances and ego and the quest for societal callings, societal success, right? Yeah. Uh, ways that society quantifies it, like money, things, and I think I'm, I'm starting to make some progress on that. So, lots of wonderful things out there um, that spiritism brings us, and that's one of the beauties, right? It brings us different things, whatever it is that you want to search for. And I am extremely grateful for the presence of all you guys here today for taking the time, because I know time is also important. Uh, we want to thank, uh, of course, our friend Nawur for, for being here and for all the wonderful work you're doing with the Family Spiritist Retreat, along with all our workers and helpers there, because we know these kinds of things just don't happen. It takes a lot of time and effort. So a big shout out to all those who um, are really doing the work and are invisible to us right now, right there really working for the pleasure of working because there's no payment. There's only the satisfaction of coming together and having a great time together, uh, one that uplifts our hearts. So a big thank you um, for you. A big thank you to our, our friend, Big Mac, Mackenzie Mello, who is always so thoughtful and invites us over to and has so much um, a great dedication to, uh, including this uh, wonderful event that happens every year, JORESP. And if you've ever been a part of JORESP, you see the amount of thought that goes into it with the materials, with the preparation and everything else. It's a labor of love. Um, part of a team too. So big shout out to the teams. And of course, I could not say it um, uh, otherwise. A big shout out to my brother in spirit, Flavio, who's here uh, as usual as well. And for our friends at the Alain Kardec uh, Spirit Society Masters, who's congratulations on this great new space and this great new partnership. Thank you. Thank you. And by the way, if you happen to be close to the city of Boston, uh, Every Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m., we have our English meetings here. You're welcome to come visit us. We're located at 3 Elm Street in Malden, Massachusetts. And if you're a little more north of the city, northeast of the city, there's also an opportunity for you to go visit Continue or, you know, Ella Kardec Express Society Peabody, as, uh, as we call it, right, right. Mackenzie? Yeah, Here's some details, please. Yeah, 77 Walnut Street in Peabody or Peabody. Just put there, your GPS will probably say Peabody. 
And uh, yeah, we're open a few days a week. We have one English meeting on the second Monday of each month, and you will always be welcome. So. And are you guys on Facebook or have a website as well? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Contin our our website, our the name is Continuo de Luis dot net. It, it, it's in Portuguese. It would be the little spot of light. Uh, if we would uh, free translation there, but it's Continuo de Luis. But we have a presence on on Facebook as well, so it's easy, easy to find if you know how to spell it. Continuo de Luis. And how do you spell that? <laughs> C A N T I N H O D E L U Z. Continuo de Luis. And for us, it's aksma.com or facebook.com forward slash aksma. aksma. Yeah, Ella Kardec, Spiritual Society of Massachusetts. We look right. forward to hearing from you and please do visit us.